Welcome to using the array modifier. In this video we're going to introduce you to your first modifier and that is the array modifier. We're going to let you know that they are non-destructive until you apply them. And finally, how to separate your geometry so you can work on the array that you've generated. Let's hop over into Blender. So here we have our pyramid, as always, because that's what we've been working on. I don't know whether you guys have been working on anything in between, but this is our pyramid, and we want to play with the array modifier. Now, over in the right-hand side, if you've still got it open, we need the properties window open. If you've shut it, if you could bring open a frame and change it to the properties type, and you may want to drag these out a little more so you can see all of these different types of properties that we can mess around with and we want the one that looks like a spanner or a wrench and when we click on that it, we've got this option here to add a modifier if we select add modifier and go to an array we can see it immediately generates a copy of our pyramid but it doesn't exist yet it doesn't exist until we click apply so I'm going to generate three of these and I'm going to change the offset here now, relative offsets means it's relative to the model itself. So they're exactly one of themselves apart in the x-axis. And if we have a look, we can see that the bottom of the stairs touches the rear of the pyramid each time. So we can change that. We can set them a little further apart if we want. Um, and we can change the direction of which they're set apart. Isn't that awesome? So we've got lots of control over what we do there. However, these are all one object at the moment. If I scale one, they'll scale the others perfectly. So if we want to make a difference here, first of all, we have to apply. Ah, modifiers cannot be applied in edit mode. Little secret, that's why I didn't want to switch over to object mode, so you could see that. You do need to be in object mode to apply this modifier. So let's click on apply. And now these three they're not objects, they're all one mesh. These three parts of this mesh are now real. We can start messing around with the geometry of each one. So in order to do that, we really need to separate them out. And there's a straightforward way of doing that. We do need to go back into edit mode, and then we have to select all of the geometry we want to put into its own area. So I'm gonna switch into wireframe mode, and then do a border select and highlight all of that. Now I've selected the other model there, so I'm gonna go onto the top and I'm gonna highlight all of our model after deselecting, because border select adds every time. There we go, now I'm gonna press the P key. And we're gonna separate by selection. So now we've got pyramid 001. I'm gonna call that excitedly Pyramid 2. In fact, in this case, it's almost not worth um, renaming them, but I am because I'm going to do a big pyramid in the middle once we've separated them all out. So we've got that and we just need to separate this here. So we're going to hop into edit mode on that object. And finally, let's just go above everything and hit box select. And there we go. We've selected everything there. I'm going to go P by selection and that's sele separated that out and I'm going to make that one small PYR I really small prime great in all my rush pyramid there we go so we've got big pyramid small pyramid and pyramid two and when we select those we can see they're now all separate objects that we can mess around with so I can literally grab this now and move it to my heart's content and to where I want so I can pop it over here and for the purpose of this exercise, I'm going to constrain it to the X, Y axis. So I'm going to exclude it so it doesn't disappear into the ground. Anymore. I'm going to pop it over here. And then finally, I'm going to scale it on the Z axis. I can't really see what's going on, unfortunately. So I'm going to cancel that and rotate around. I'm going to scale it on the, there we go. Scale it all the way up. So it's a super pyramid, but only on the Z axis. It's going to look a bit funny but that's okay for the purpose of this. This one I'm only going to scale on the X, Y axis. So it's going to be lovely and flat. And as you can see, it's disappeared into the 
distance there. And if we make it like that, we've got our three different pyramids. Brilliant. And they're all separate. Now it's time for your challenge. Let's hop over and see what it is. Create your stairs. I bet you guys knew that was coming. So the steps themselves should run from the bottom to the top, all the way. Uh, I want you to create your steps using the array modifier and finish with one mesh object at the end. So there's a clue that you're going to have to separate something at some point. Pause the video now and go give that a go. Welcome back. Let's create some stairs for our pyramid. So let's hop straight on over into Blender. So let's work on our pyramid two, which is this one at the front. I'm going to leave the other ones in the background just for aesthetics. And I'm going to hop on over into edit mode. I'm going to start at the bottom. You could start at the top if you want. And I'm going to zoom in right to this front area here. I'm going to go to vertex select. You could do this a number of ways. And I'm going to turn off merging vertices for the moment because I do want them to be separate. I'm going to click that vertex there and extrude. So I've just created an edge, basically, another vertex freely floating in space, but only on the Z axis. And I don't know how far to do it. Uh, perhaps 0.2. Yes, 0.2 sounds nice. 0.2. And then I'm going to extrude it in the X axis again by 0.2. So that's going to be the outline of our stair. I'm going to select it there and here and extrude this way and I'm going to snap it over here. So in fact in this case I'm going to turn on the snapping to edge and move it across until it's on this edge here. It causes a few issues. I only need to lock it in the Y axis. There we go. So now that's our step. We just need to multiply it several times. However, it's part of this pyramid at the moment so we're going to have to select the geometry we want and in this case it's just these two faces that we've created and then we want to separate it with the p key by selection and it's added it down here so i'm just going to do that pyramid to stairs okay so we've got pyramid two and pyramid two stairs and the stairs are what i want to apply the modifier on so we're going to go down to add modifier go to array and nothing's happened. Why is nothing happened? It's probably disappeared inside the model. There we go. If I turn on wireframe, we can see it's disappeared inside the model. So it's actually going in the x-axis in the right direction. It's going one step unit there. We also want to go one step unit up as well. So on Z, we want that to go to one. And there we go. We've got our second step. Now, I haven't a clue how many steps we're going to need to fill up our pyramid. So I'm just going to increase this number until it looks right. So I'm just zoom around to the top. I think we need two more. Excellent. So in this case, with a, a step height and depth of 0.2, I need 35 to get, get to the top of mine. Now finally, because they don't exist yet, only the bottom one does, I'm going to apply my modifier. Now I can go in, and if I wanted to, edit these ever so slightly so I can make one higher, one lower, etc, etc, if I wanted to. I don't, but what I do want to do is now merge these two objects back together. So I'm going to hop over into object mode, select our stairs and our pyramid and press Control and J for join. They're now together and unfortunately it's named Pyramid 2 Stairs, I don't want that, it's just Pyramid by itself at the moment and there we go we've got our pyramid with stairs that's great how did you guys get on see you in the next lecture